is probably one of the most requested videos that I've had on the channel. Now I have actually owned a power plant in the past, but it was a used one. I actually did like it. It just wasn't for me at the time. I'm going to reevaluate that because I can see its potential for other people as a very light, but yet very capable option. So let's go ahead and open it up and we'll talk about it. Um, I don't know what it's like out of the box. And that's kind of something I want to, I wanted to determine for myself. So I went ahead and bought a brand new one and we're going to unbox it real quick. See if I can pop this thing open. There you go. Boom. All right, so I'm not gonna bother with that. I've already played with this before. I just had a regular stainless version and it was used, like I said, there was one major issue with it. So let's go ahead and just take a look. So this is the power pint, okay? It comes with a pocket clip, something that not all of their tools do. It's also only 4.2 ounces. So let's actually confirm that, see if they're actually telling the truth. All right, 4.2, yes indeed, which is the same as, that's the wrong thing, that's carrots, grams. What, is, what does that say? Oh, that's grains. That's too funny. Grams, 119. Okay, sorry about that. I forgot this could do all those other things. Anyway, let's turn that off. So, the power pint. This is the tool that they should be using as a reference point. It's one of the few tools in their entire lineup that solves their problem, that actually uses the compound leverage system appropriately and actually makes sense. Why is that? Well, look at how much the, the head opens as you open it. Why that matters is the problem with their compound leverage system for so many of their tools is you have to basically like have it like this in order to get it around a normal nut. It, this ratio, this gear ratio, is far better than the ones they use on their other tools. I really, really like that. And actually this came, it just came really smooth. How's the play? There's no play. There's no play. And that actually was true with the ones that I had, the used ones, there was play. There's no play here. And it's nice and smooth, that's good. Now, the compound leverage system makes more sense in a small tool because amount of pressure I can put on this is quite a bit higher. I can multiply how much force I can apply, not just the distance between the two points here and here, but also the fact that it has a multiplier. That's huge. Now, let's close this up for a second. Hold on. Let me, let me grab some bit kits here. One of the things that I think they have done with this that I like so much, and a number of them have, is actually a bit holder. So the way it works is it actually fits in the plier head itself. So you open it up a little bit, stick your bit in, and it actually has a magnet that kind of holds it in place. But then to keep it from moving, you squeeze it together like so, and then it won't move. So the only problem I have with it is that you kind of have to keep pressure on this tool together in order to hold the bit from twisting in your in it. But actually this feels pretty firm, which is good. I'm not don't think it's going anywhere. But it's in line, right? It's dead center. And it doesn't require to dedicate slots for a bit driver of any sort. It's built into it and it uses standard implements that you can find anywhere. They're already at a huge advantage over some of the other options in such a si small package. Now, um, the other thing that uh, I, should, I should show, and this is something that not everyone is able to do, you can actually open the blade one-handed if you have the dexterity. The problem is, is that the lock is on the inside. So in order to undo it, you actually have to kind of finagle it out. Now, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there you go. So in order to um, open it, you have to be, well, first of all, it's very hard to do one-handed. It's not really meant for that. But then you can open it up partially to unlock it. 
It has that blade. It also has a serrated blade on the other side. Now, my last one was bird to heck, and it wasn't very sharp. This is actually ridiculously sharp. They did a very good job with this serrated blade, and it's not super deep. These are nice shallow serrations. So this is actually a useful serrated blade. So I like that. Same thing. Now, the other two tools. Now, the last one I had, I had a file. Let me find the file. And I found the file to be pretty useless. Didn't have uh, an aggressive enough feel to it. And this is the complete opposite of that. What? Okay, that's actually surprising. The last one I had had no texture, practically. None. This is like the opposite of that. I was ready to say this was junk, but it's not. And not only that, it has teeth down at the bottom too. Okay, all right. I'm I'm in I'm getting getting excited. Now the question is, how well did they do it on the scissor? Because the last time I did the scissor, what was happening is the spring was jumping off and out of the frame. And so that was very annoying for me. This is really nice so far. I'm actually a bit surprised. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't had many good experiences with SOG. Let me go find something to cut with this. Well, let's do a quick check on this and see how it does. So starting with some basic thread. Does that, no problem. Now let's take a look at the fabric. That's not good. Um, does not cut that fabric very well at all. Most scissors that I've tried are able to cut this fabric. That's unfortunate. Now what about the Kevlar? Same thing, gets bound up. Seatbelt, same deal. So pretty mediocre scissors, unfortunately. And I think this is one of those tools that really needs to be right. Now, that being said, is it a matter of sharpness? It doesn't feel like it, they feel quite sharp. So what is causing the issue? I'm actually not sure. To be honest, it feels like it should at least cut the fabric why is it okay let me let me try to push it in a little bit which I have to push rever I have to push this way which is weird oh okay wait a second wait a second all right let me try it let me try it with it down on the bottom side so I'm used to pushing it in let me try that okay okay all right all right we can, we can make it work. It's just you're gonna have to press the two blades together. So I'm pushing this way, that direction, and pushing the two blades together. So it's usable, that's good. Let's see if it'll do the Kevlar now, now that I understand that. Not really, but that's kind of a stretch anyway for some scissors. No on the seatbelt. Okay, so at the very least, you'll be able to do it for minor, minor things. Uh, I don't think it's a great scissor, but it's salvageable, salvageable, and it's, this particular one has actually really good peening. I'm not feeling any movement, and the spring's not popping out. That's another good thing. So, decent, not great. It's not going to score very high on the, uh, on the gauntlet testing, but you know what? I'll take it. Now let's go to the inside for a second. Let's go, or it's not the inside. Let's go to the outside because all these tools are outside facing. There's a lot of other tools inside this thing. So let's pull them out here. We have a can opener. This is just to pull out the tool. A full three-dimensional Phillips and a bottle opener, which shouldn't be there. It should be something else because it literally only does bottle opener. But I like the Phillips. This is actually three-dimensional Phillips and it's mostly in line. I'm not going to be able to, yeah, it's mostly in line. So that's good. And it locks, everything locks on the inside. That's another great thing. And on the other side, I have, how do I get access to that? So I pull this out and then it kind of, all right, well, that's not the easiest thing to access. That's unfortunate. And it, the one thing I want access to is probably, let me pull this out again. It's probably this, this one right here, the, uh, the pull cutter. 
I think for opening packages that becomes very, very, you know, necessary. So here's the three components on the other side. Small flathead, reamer all, very, very sharp, and pull cutter. I just wish they were a little bit easier to access. But overall, is this, is this something I could recommend? Well, here's the deal. This tool is $50. Um, there are very, very few decent quality tools under 50. Um, less than 10, I would say, that I would genuinely recommend. And this is fitting into a size frame that I don't see very common, right? It's not, it's not a common size frame. And it has so many tools built into it. But I think the really big deal here is that it has that plier, it has a blade, and it has the ability to use standard hex bits. That alone, I think, qualifies it as something I can recommend. But it does do a decent job. And it has a great tool set, surprisingly robust tool set for something so small. Even that Phillips looks like it could be quite useful. So I do wish, at least this side all seems to be easy to deploy for the most part. Um, you just pull out one of those two internals that has a pull with your fingernail and you get access to the Phillips. But on this side, I really wish there was another way to get the, um, the pull cutter. That, that is a little bit of an annoyance. And I'm sorry because this is a black tool. It's not the easiest thing to see. But yeah, decent job here. And the pocket clip, the pocket clip is a big deal. Because this is small enough, and a, a number of people have told me, that they keep it in their watch pocket, their lighter pocket, or whatever it happens to be. So this is going to work in conjunction with a folding knife. And... Uh, that would probably be great for a lot of people. This would be a decent backup to a folding knife that you have that you carry with you. And uh, speaking of size, let me just give you an idea just how compact this actually is. So this thing is only just, just under, just over three inches, three and a quarter inches, okay? And it's only just over half an inch wide. So it's a little bit wider than you might expect, but it's surprisingly tiny. And still, we're talking about something that is only, what is it, um, 4.2 ounces? Very impressive. Very, very impressive. I like it. I actually do like this SOG. This is the second SOG that I've been able to say that with. And I have, believe it or not, had a lot of them in my possession. They just were never worth showing on a video. <laughs> um, but this is one of only two. This one and the Snippet are the two tools so far from SOG that I can genuinely recommend. I am very interested in trying the Power Leader, I think it's called, because it's the same basic design. It's minus the file and the uh, serrated blade, but includes a corkscrew, which isn't all that important. The big thing I like about it is it has the a, a mechanism that locks it for the bit, so you don't have to hold it quite as tight and still use it as a bit driver. So I think that is something I want to try for sure. But it's about fifteen dollars more expensive for some reason than the power pipe. This being forty nine ninety nine versus 65. I don't know why it's more expensive. It seems like a more specialized tool set. It should be cheaper in many ways. But here we are. This is $50 and actually is probably worth it. I mean, it actually has a warranty that you can you can actually utilize. So, well done to SOG. This is one of the only tools so far that I've been I can genuinely recommend. This and the snippet. So, yeah, great. Awesome. Love it.